Hello everyone, my name is Geetu Krishnan and in this video I have solved uh, some problems from Geet 2018 question paper of agricultural engineering. This video will be helpful for all the agricultural engineering students who are preparing for Geet, ICAR and ARS examination. So I have solved all the problems from soil and conservation part in this PPT. Hope this video will be helpful for you all. So without wasting much time, let us start solving the problems. So the first question is, the elevation of pressure gauge and porous cup of the tensiometer installed in unsaturated zone are 145.8 meter and 144.2 meter respectively. Pressure measured at the gauge is minus 19.62 into 10 raised to 3 newton per meter square. The specific weight of water is 9810 newton per meter cube. The estimated pressure at the porous cup is dash newton per meter square. So this problem is related to tensiometer that is used to find out the soil moisture content. So this is a schematic diagram of a tensiometer where the point A represents the portion at the porous cup and point B represents the pressure gauge. Uh, in the figure, the pressure gauge is actually a mercury manometer. Okay. Now, the elevation of the pressure gauge and porous cup is given in the question. That is actually the gravitational head represented by small letter Z. For the pressure gauge, the gravitational head ZB is 145.8 meter. For the porous cup, the gravitational head ZE is 144.2 meter. The pressure at the pressure gauge PB is minus 19,620 newton per meter square and the specific weight of water rho G is equal to 9,810 newton per meter cube. Now for the hydrostatic law of liquids in equilibrium we can say that the hydraulic head at a point is constant which is represented by the equation Z plus P by rho G is a constant where Z is the gravitational head and P by rho G is the pressure head. For this question, we can equate this uh, this equation like Z A plus P A by rho G is equal to Z B plus P B by rho G. In this equation, the only unknown is P A that is the pressure at the porous cup. All the other things are known. So substituting the values in the equation, we get P A as minus 3924 Newton per meter square. So the second question is, the drawdown at the well phase of a 30 cm diameter fully penetrating well in a confined aquifer is 3 meter. The radius of influence of this well is 3 km. For the same discharge in aquifer condition, the drawdown at 300 meter away from the center of the well is dash meter. So in the question, a confined aquifer is given. So a confined aquifer is the one in which both the top and bottom of the aquifer is sealed. Now they have given the radius diameter of the well as 30 cm. So we can say radius R1 is 15 cm or 0 0.15 meter. Uh, then the Radius of influence of the well is 3 km, so capital R is equal to 3000 meter, and the drawdown for this condition S1 is 3 meter. Now they have given for the same discharge and aquifer properties, uh, there is a second set of parameters given that is R2 is 300 meter, so the distance is 300 meter, the radius of influence is the same 3000 meter. Now we have to find out the drawdown for this particular condition. So in order to solve this problem, we need to know the equation of discharge in a confined aquifer that is given by theme that is Q is equal to 2 pi K B S by L and R by R where 2 pi is a constant, k is the hydraulic conductivity, b is the thickness of aquifer, s is the drawdown, capital R is the radius of influence and small r is the radius of the well or the uh, distance, distance from where we are measuring. Now uh, 2 pi is a constant and k and b are the aquifer properties, there is hydraulic conductivity and the 
uh, thickness of the aquifer. So, since in the question they have given the discharge of both the uh, same, we can equate these two discharges. So, we can write 2 pi kb into 3 by ln 3000 divided by 0 0.15 is equal to 2 pi kb into s ln 3000 by 300. So, we get s as 0 0.71 meter. So the third question is, a permanent mature orchard has a tree spacing of 4 by 5 meter. Each tree has a shading area of 40 percentage to be irrigated with the pigtail pattern multi exit drip emitters. The effective wetting geometry of each emitter is 2 by 2 meter. The emitter have discharge constant and exponent of 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 respectively. The coefficient of variation of emitter discharges 0.06 the average and minimum operating pressures are 120 kilopascal and 100 kilopascal respectively the emission uniformity of the emitter is dash percent so here we are asked to find out the emission uniformity of the emitters and for this we have an empirical equation that is eu is equal to 100 into 1 minus 1.27 cb by root n into qm by qa where EU is the emission uniformity expressed in percentage, CV is the coefficient of variation, N is the number of drippers per plant, QM is the minimum discharge and QA is the average discharge. So in the question we have the CV value that is 0 0.06. Now we have to find the number of drippers per plant. For this we have an equation that is Number of drippers per plant is equal to percentage total area shaded by the tree into area per tree divided by effective area wetted by a single emitter. So in the question, uh, the per tot percentage area shaded by the tree is given as 40%. Area per tree is 4 by 5 meter. Effective area wetted by the emitter is 2 by 2 meter. Substituting the values in the equation, we get number of drippers per plant is 2. Now we have the minimum and average operating pressures in the question but we have to find out the minimum and average discharge. For this we use the equation q is equal to kh raised to x where q is the discharge, h is the operating pressure and k and x are the constants. So in the question the value of k and x is given as 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 respectively we have uh, uh, the H A also so we can find out Q A and uh, Q M uh, substituting the values in the equation we got a Q A as 5.3 and Q M as 4.75 so we got all the values now substituting the values in the equation of emission uniformity we get the emission uniformity as 85 percentage so the next question is the 6 hour unit hydrograph of a watershed is represented by an isosceles triangle with a peak of 180 meter cube per second and time to peak of 18 hours. The phi index of this watershed is 3 mm per hour and the constant base flow is 20 meter cube per second. The accumulated rainfall received in the watershed at 6 hour and 12 hour from the start of the storm are 38 mm and 106 mm respectively. The resulting peak of the flood hydrograph due to the storm event is dash meter cube per second. So now we have to find out the peak of a flood hydrograph. In order to solve this problem, we need to know the relationship between the ordinate of a unit hydrograph to the ordinate of a flood hydrograph. We know that ordinate of a unit hydrograph into effective rainfall will give us the ordinate of the direct runoff hydrograph and the ordinate of direct runoff hydrograph plus the base flow will give us the ordinate of the flood hydrograph. Now in the question the peak of the peak discharge of the 6 hour unit hydrograph is given as 180 meter cube per second. So in this first equation we have the ordinate of the unit hydrograph. Now we need to find out the effective rainfall. For that, the phi index is given. Phi index is simply nothing but it is the infiltration. Or oh, by equation, it is rainfall minus runoff divided by the total time. It is given as 3 mm per hour. So for, so for a 6 hour unit hydrograph, we can say that the phi index will be 6 into 3, that is 18 mm. 
now they have given the accumulated rainfall for the first six hours the accumulated rainfall is given as 38 mm if we have the accumulated rainfall and the phi index we can find out the effective rainfall that is effective rainfall is equal to accumulated rainfall minus the phi index so we get the effective rainfall for the first six hours as 38 minus 18 20 millimeter now for the first 12 hour the accumulated rainfall is 106 mm so for the second 6 hour the accumulated rainfall will be 106 minus the 38 mm that is 68 mm thus the effective rainfall is equal to 68 minus 18 that is equal to 50 mm where 68 is the accumulated rainfall for the second 6 hour and 18 is the phi index now we have to find out the peak of the direct run of hydrograph is equal to the peak of the unit hydrograph into the effective rainfall the peak of unit hydrograph is 180 into effective rainfall is 2 cm whenever we take effective rainfall we write it in centimeters because for a unit hydrograph the effective rainfall is taken as 1 centimeter so this 20 mm that is 2 centimeter multiplied by 2 plus 180 into 5 centimeter so we got the peak of direct run of hydrograph as 1260 meter cube per second now the base flow is given as 20 meter cube per second so we can say the peak of flood hydrograph is equal to 1260 plus 20 that is 1280 meter cube per second so the next question is three geometrically identical lysimeters a b and c installed in a paddy field have uniform initial depth initial ponding depth of 12 centimeter after a week, the recorded water depths in A, B and C are 10.4, 8.6 and 7 cm respectively. A rainfall received during this week is 15 mm and crop coefficient of paddy is 0.94. Lysimeter A has a closed bottom with no plant. Lysimeter B has an open bottom with no plant. Lysimeter C has an open bottom with paddy plants. Neglecting the boundary effects and groundwater contribution in the lysimeters, the weekly potential evapotranspiration will be dash centimeter. So the question is to find out the weekly potential evapotranspiration. So in this question they have used lysimeters to find out the evapotranspiration and they have given that the initial ponding depth in the lysimeters is 12 centimeter. But they have also given that they have received a rainfall of 15 millimeter during this week so we can say that the initial ponding depth as uh, 12 centimeter plus 15 mm rainfall or 1.5 centimeter so the total ponding depth is as 13.5 centimeter now we have they have given three lysimeters so the value I have represented in a tabular column so for lysimeter a b and c the total depth of water ponding water is the same that is 13.5 centimeter but after one week uh, the depth of ponding water has reduced to 10.4 in lysimeter a 8.6 in lysimeter b and 7 centimeter in lysimeter c now we have to find the potential evapotranspiration if you take lysimeter A, it has a closed bottom with no plants. And, and also in the question they have given that we have to neglect the boundary effects and groundwater contribution in the lysimeter. So since the bottom is closed, there is no groundwater contribution, no boundary effects. So the water, water lost is only because of potential evapotranspiration. So 13.5 minus 10.4 that is 3.1 centimeters the potential evapotranspiration from lysimeter A. Now for lysimeter B it has an open bottom with no plant. Even though it has an open bottom there is no boundary effects in groundwater contribution. So the water loss is only because of evapotranspiration so 13.5 minus 8.6 that is 4.9 is the potential evapotranspiration from lysimeter b now in lysimeter c it has an open bottom with paddy plants so here comes the term 
crop evapotranspiration so if we reduce 13.5 minus 7 we get 6.5 that is actually the crop evapotranspiration we have an equation etc is equal to kc into et0 where etc is the crop evapotranspiration kc is the crop coefficient and et0 is the potential evapotranspiration so we in the question they have also given the crop coefficient so we can find out the potential evapotranspiration by using the equation etc by kc so we got the potential evapotranspiration in lysimeter c as 7 centimeter so if we add the 3 we got the pt as 15 centimeter and for the weekly potential evapotranspiration we have to take the average of these three and we got it as 5 centimeter so the next question is a rectangular chute spillway is designed for gully erosion control with a drop of 5 meter peak flow of 1.81 meter cube per second and maximum inlet water level of 0.81 meter frictional head loss over the apron is 20 percentage of h the design height of the chute block is equal to the depth of flow in the waterway acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second square if the coefficient of discharge of the wear section is 1.66 the height of the chute block is dash meter so in this question a chute spillway is given and we are asked to find out the height of the chute blocks for in order to solve this equation we will start with the hydraulic design of this chute spillway and this is done using the wear formula that is QP is equal to CLH raised to 3 by 2, where QP is the peak discharge rate, C is the coefficient of discharge, L is the wear length and H is the head of flow. So in the question, they have given the peak flow as 1.81 meter cube per second and the head of flow as 0.81 meter. The coefficient of discharge is given as 1.66. So the only unknown is the wear length. So substituting the value in the equation, we get the wear length as 1.5 meter. Now we need to find out the velocity at the toe of stilling basin. We for this we use the formula V is equal to 2GH where it is the head loss at the toe. We are given that the drop in the gullet is 5 meter and they have also given there is a frictional head loss of 20 percentage of H. So the head loss at the toe is drop in the gully head minus the frictional loss of the apron. So we will get it as 4 meter. So if we know the well, so we can find out the velocity using the equation V is equal to root 2 gh and we get velocity as 8.85 meter per second. Now they have given a clue that is the design height of the chute block is equal to the depth of flow in the waterway. So we have to find out the depth of flow in the waterway. In order to find this, we need to make a find out a relationship between the discharge and the area. We know that Q is equal to A into V, where A is the area of the water body on the crest and V is the velocity of the flow. So the area of the water body in the crest, we can split it into wear length into the depth of the flow. So in this equation the only unknown is the depth of the flow y1 so substituting the values we will get y1 as 0.136 meter so the last question is furrows of 120 meter length with 0.5 percentage slope are made at 90 centimeter spacing the maximum known erosive stream flow rate is applied in a furrow that takes one hour to reach the lower end then this flow rate is reduced to half of its size and subsequently continued for another one hour. The average depth of applied water is dash centimeter. So this question is based on furrow, furrow irrigation. So they have given the length of the furrow is 120 meter, width is 90 centimeter or 0.9 meter and the slope is given as 0.5%. Now the maximum known erosive stream flow is applied in the furrow so for finding out the maximum known erosive stream flow there is an empirical equation that is qm is equal to 0.6 by s where qm is the maximum known erosive stream flow and s is the slope in percentage so we substitute the values 
we have a slope of 0.5 so we get the maximum known erosive stream flow rate as 1.2 liter per second so our question is to find out the depth of order applied so we have the discharge we have the length and width then how we will find the depth so the for that there's the equation q is equal to l into w into d by t so if you have any doubt in this equation we let us check the units in the left hand side and the light right hand side the unit of q is meter q per second so coming to the right hand side length the unit is meter width this meter depth is meter so together meter q by time that is second so meter q per second so from this depth is equal to q into t divided by lw so for the first one hour they have applied the maximum known erosive stream flow so qm is 1.2 and uh, uh, the time is 1 hour so qm is 1.2 liter per second so we converted it into meter cube per hour so 1.2 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 3600 into 1 hour time divided by length into width 120 into 0 0.9 we get d1 as 0 0.04 meter now they have said that uh, then the flow rate is reduced to half so q become 0 0.6 liter per second and it is again continued for one hour so 0 0.6 we convert it into meter cube per second that is into 10 raised to 3 into 3600 into one hour divided by 120 length into width we got d2 as 0 0.02 meter so the average depth of applied water is 0 0.04 plus 0 0.02 that is 0 0.06 meter or 6 centimeter Thank you all for watching my video. If you find this video useful, please share this video with all your friends, subscribe to my channel and press the like button.